Today we are going to consider the role, function and appointment of members of the judiciary. In this context, we are only concerned with the professional judges. We'll consider lay magistrates in the next video. There have been a number of significant changes in recent years, both to judicial rules and to the way in which judges are appointed. Issues that tend to arise in relation to the judiciary can be grouped together under factors such as independence, appointment of diversity, as well as their retirement and removal. According to the rule of law, which we have considered earlier, judges play an important constitutional role in the English legal system. This means that judges must act in a manner that is impartial and independent. They must be free from influence of the executive and be politically neutral and unbiased. The Constitutional Reform Act 2005 now requires the government to uphold the independence of the judiciary. The doctrine of parliamentary supremacy dictates that a judge cannot declare an act of parliament invalid. They can, however, issue a declaration of incompatibility in relation to the Human Rights Act 1998. It is not unusual for members of the judiciary to find they are presiding in a case that is politically sensitive. This can put members of the judiciary in a position of potential conflict with the government if members of the judiciary are not independent, in that they are biased or under political pressure. They will not be able to uphold the rule of law. There are a number of mechanisms in place that secure the independence of the, of the judiciary in the English legal system. These are security of tenure, political neutrality, judicial immunity, and salary. Let's consider these three in detail. Security of tenure. Under the Act of Settlement 1700, judges have security of tenure. This means that senior judges remain in post during good behavior and they can be removed only following a petition from the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Politically neutral. Judges are expected to be politically neutral without bias and as such senior judges are not permitted to become members of parliament. Judicial immunity. In order to ensure judicial independence and integrity, judges cannot be sued for words said or things done in the performance of their role. Salary. Members of the professional judiciary receive a general salary, which is set at a level intended to reduce the temptation to accept bribes. Having said that, let us now come to the appointment of judges. Under the Courts and Legal Services Act 1990, significant changes were made to the eligibility criteria for a judicial office. It expanded rights of audience throughout the court structure and in doing so created the opportunity for other legal professions, professionals to apply for a judicial office. The Tribunals, Courts and, Form and, and Enforcement Act 2007 further extended the opportunity to apply for judicial office by abolishing the requirement for rights of audience and instead requiring that applicants must satisfy eligibility criteria. It is therefore now possible for academics and legal executives to become members of the judiciary. The Constitutional Reform Act 2005 established the Judicial Appointments Commission JAC. The JAC has responsibility for appointment of all judges in the English legal system. The JAC has identified five core qualities and abilities that are required in order to hold judicial office. These are intellectual capacity, personal qualities, and ability to understand, deal fairly, authority and communication skills, as well as the capacity for efficiency. Training is also an important aspect of judicial appointments. In 2011, the Judicial Studies Board (GSB) and the Tribunal's Judicial Training Group were merged and became the Judicial College. The newly formed Judicial College assumes responsibility for providing training to judicial office holders. The age of retirement for judges is 70 years of age. A judge may remain in office beyond this point at the discretion of the Lord Chief Justice with the Lord Chancellor's approval. Judicial conduct is also an important point to be considered within this chapter. Section 108 of the Constitutional Reform Act 2005 established powers for the Lord Chief Justice to advise, warn, and formally reprimand judicial office holders. It also gave powers to suspend a judge in limited circumstances. There are a number of significant criticism of the judiciary. These can be broadly categorized under the following headings. Lack of diversity, judicial independence, and pre prejudice and bias. Demographics show that the judiciary in England and Wales is predominantly white and male. If we 
were to narrow that down, we'd see that the average age of a judge is 58 years old, and most senior judges hold an Oxbridge education. Judges are not democratically elected in the English legal system, and that means that they are not democratically accountable. The extent to which judges are impartial and independent is also open to criticism, particularly when we consider their participation in chairing politically sensitive public inquiries. As for criticism on bias and prejudice, there are far too many public examples of members of the judiciary exhibiting bias and prejudice towards women, ethnic and religious minorities, and individuals with disabilities.